Hi, this is Mr. Cassidy, and I'll be covering uh, 10.4 line uh, pr proofs with perpendicular lines. This is probably my seventh time trying this video, and hopefully I'll get it correct one of these days. Let me try to adjust the contrast here so you can see what I see. It's getting better. Awesome. All right. Well, I think seventh time is a charm. So let me start us off with a quick good math journey. So in lesson 10.4, uh, we cover three main theorems. The first is the linear pair perpendicular theorem. What that means is if I have two lines, line G and line H, and they're intersecting, that forms two linear paired angles. So angle one and angle two form a linear pair. Well, what do we know about linear pair? By definition, a linear pair is supplementary. So angle one and angle two have to add up to 180. So the linear pair perpendicular theorem is saying if angle one is congruent to angle two, then line G has to be perpendicular to line H because those two would have to be 90 degree angles because they're equal measurements. Next, perpendicular transversal theory. Here's what that means. That means if I have two lines intersecting a transversal, so this transversal is at 90 degrees to one of the lines, line H, and line H is parallel to line K, then I know J is also perpendicular to line K. Again, the shorthand of these really helps, so you can read it like this. If H is parallel to line K and J is perpendicular to H, then J is perpendicular to K. All right. Our last idea is this, lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem. Here I've got two lines and I've got a transversal P and P happens to form a 90 degree angle with both of the lines. Well, what does that mean? That means the two lines are parallel. They have to be parallel because it's forming these corresponding 90 degree angles. So how do we apply this? Well, we apply it two main ways in this lesson. The first is problems having to do with distance formula. So it's just trying to find the distance from a point like point A to a line like line Y. In this case, point A forms several different distances to line Y. Which one do I choose? Well, you want to choose the one at a perpendicular angle. That'll be the shortest distance from point A to line Y. So I pick line point D here because that's forming a perpendicular angle. I labeled x1, y1, x2, y2, and I went ahead and plugged those into the distance formula, which you see copied here. As I simplified that, I ended up getting the square root of 72, which is probably about 8.7, 8.6 maybe. I'm, I'm not sure. I didn't plug it into a calculator. Uh, so just be careful on these. You just want to find the shortest distance from point A to these lines. In this case here, it would be right here. It'll always be the one with the right angle. You can pretty much ignore these other ones because they must be, you can think about the right angle. This one has to, because it's rotated out here, be further distance than the shortest distance between these two points. Our last idea is this. You're given a series of pick lines in a picture, and your question is, is anything parallel? In problem five, uh, we can't tell. Honestly, nothing is marked enough to tell whether any lines are parallel. So there's no answer there. Um, notice this right angle is here. We can tell that these two are perpendicular, P and S, but Q has no angles marked. So it might be perpendicular, it might not. It might be parallel, but we can't tell. Uh, question six would be a good example. Here we've got two perpendicular angles on the transversal R. And what do I know if two, uh, two perpendicular angles are there? Well, I know that line P would have to be parallel to line Q. And that's because of this, the lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem. Here's a transversal, two perpendicular angles, makes it so that M is parallel to N. So P has to be parallel to Q because of that theorem. All right. Well, thank you for your time and energy. I'll record a short video lesson on lesson 10.5, and I hope this helps you guys with your work this week.